Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. You go to the newsletters, you'll see it on the right-hand side. You can subscribe to Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%, and one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, as well as a huge amount of information that Steve has as soon as you get that letter. So come over to our website at TFNN, hit that button, and you are off to the races. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? About that John Rom guy. Amazing. He's he's on a tear, man. He's on a tear. Yeah. Yeah, just like just like Scotty Schefter was last year. It seems like Rom is doing that exact same thing. Yes. But you know what a what a fantastic um, Masters tournament it was. Uh, for 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 me, uh, you know, and 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 our weather's just a, a tad different yours yours and mine. Right. But we I, we haven't had rain down here. I can't remember when we had a bad weather day recently. Okay. Uh, over the last couple months. This Sunday, yesterday, it was a terrible weather day here. So it was perfect for being able to get up early, watch the finish of the third round, and then watch the uh, watch the uh, last round uh, yesterday. But yeah. it, you know, amazing that Tiger uh, tied the record now for the most number of cuts made out there. So that was pretty cool. The temperatures, the the, the, the weather that those guys played in. <laughs> that was extraordinary. Heavy. It's so cool that it turned around, uh, you know, that they could finish it because – if you yeah. have, saw it, folks, okay, trees are coming down. I mean, that was hard to comprehend. There's, there's two trees coming down. It's like, whoa, man. Big, yeah. yeah, big, big, big trees. But it's a Huge. great tournament. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved uh, Phil. How about Phil and yeah. uh, and Jordan Spieth? I, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if they broke a record for a, two, you know, uh, uh, for their under par uh, between the two uh, between the two of them in, you know, for one group. I, I've got to guess that they did. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, I mean, Phil's like. Uh, you know he he's broken some records and finished number two. Yeah, I think for it sure. almost won the thing. So great tournament. Hey, what I thought we would do today is something just a tad different. Okay. Than than what I've done in the past here in providing information, really just to give people what I'd call something to think about. So the whole purpose of today's presentation is to throw out some information yeah. and have people think about it. And and really the end goal here with regard to any conclusions that we might draw here is that. Uh, if well, we'll just let this uh, we'll let this presentation uh, take us down that path out here. But I think the, the 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 what I'm really trying to also say though is this has some longer term implications, especially for those of us that are managing long term type money. Oftentimes when we're talking and we're we're you know we're dealing with shorter term type trades out there. So the question is: Is the Federal Reserve raising? interest rates to stem inflation, which is what we all believe is going on. That's certainly the words coming out of Chair Powell's mouth. It's my belief, and I know it's your belief as well, that actions speak way louder than words. So let's go take a look at the actions of the Federal Reserve. And what I did, Tom, and everybody can they can do the same thing. They can search the Internet. And they'll find out the same information. So the first thing I, I went uh, to do is to find out what was the first time in some type of a statement that Powell used the word transitory. Turns out it was March 20th, 2019. So what I have up here on this uh, top row is I've got all of the uh, Fed meetings in 2019 and whatever rate decisions they would have made. So we had six uh, meetings uh, ever since that March 20th statement of uh, transitory. If we take a look at all of 2020 out here. So there were eight different meetings that took place between January of 2020 to December 16th of 2020. No rate increases out there. Now, if we take a look at this very bottom panel here Tom yes this is from the uh, this is from the Bureau of Information Statistics so everybody can grab this exact same uh, date out here and at least it provides for us the inflation rate uh, also by year so we can start taking a look at uh, from the time period that he used the word transitory to then we get into 2021 and in 2021, it's very clear here. We take a look at this bottom panel that rates were that in, that uh, inflation was really on the rise. We got you know we got well above the two percent level by April. It never backed down. And so these highlighted areas, here, you'll see all of 2021. Also, no rate increases. Why no rate increases when it was very clear that it wasn't transitory, that rates were going up. And in fact, we didn't see rates rise. The first time that rates rose out here was March 16, 2022. 
That was like some 15 days after Russia invaded Ukraine. So we have we we have clear inflation moving higher. The Fed doesn't take any action until Russia invades Ukraine. Why is that? Why is that just a coincidence out here? So just to summarize this, Jerome yeah. Powell first uses the word transitory, March 2019. Rates are left at zero from 2019 to all of 2020. March 21, inflation prints at 2.6 percent, Powell by 4.2 and continues to rise. Powell still takes no action. Russia invades Ukraine February 24th. And at the very next FOMC meeting, March 16th, just less than three weeks since that invasion, the Fed begins raising interest rates. And I don't believe that's a coincidence. And the only reason I don't believe that's a coincidence is because I've gone back and I've done some of the homework. Here's some of the homework. If we take a look on April 2nd, 1917, that's when uh, Woodrow Wilson asked Congress to declare war on Germany. So all we have to do is go back to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. We can grab this data. We can take a look at inflation rates, in this case here I'm using the Consumer Price Index, and the arrow marks the beginning of when the uh, U.S. entered um, World War One, And what we can see is inflation rose, continued to rise. It really, World War One began before the U.S. got involved. It actually took place in 2014. We can see that uh, inflation began rising into the, in, in the United States. So that's World War One. Now let's take a look at this chart here. So just to kind of bring it home, summarize it a little bit clearer, here we've got the inflation rates. Um, and so I go back to 1915. We can see World War One inflation moving higher. We take a look at World War II inflation moving higher. We take a look at Vietnam War, inflation moving higher. Now we get to the Russia-Ukraine War, and inflation is moving higher. So in one sense, we can say, yeah, Powell was raising interest rates to stem off inflation because he knew what really I didn't know until I started to do the work on this was that during our war times, we've got inflation that starts moving higher. So in one sense, you could technically say, yeah, that's why he was raising rates. But he's not giving us the impression that he's raising rates because of a war an impending war that's coming. So I believe he was really trying to get out front. And I don't believe, maybe maybe we start to see some little bit of a pause here. But if, in fact, we are really headed into World War III, I believe that rates continue to rise. So sometimes it's maybe not what he's saying. Maybe it's what he's not saying. Now, of course, folks might be sitting back and say, well, what's that mean to me? And I do think if, if this, in fact, if this conclusion, if we go down this path and say, OK, that's logical. Well, I, what I also did here is I produced the uh, charts here during World War One, just so we could get a feel. So I can only go I can't go back to the exact dates, but I can go back to the years here uh, with this tool from Seasonic. So if we just take a look at 1914 to 1918, people will see how the Dow traded. If we take a look at World War Two, we can see how the Dow traded. If we take a look at uh, Vietnam, we can see how the Dow trade. I don't want people to think that the markets are just going to move to the downside out there, but I think that there is long-term planning that we might need to consider, and I believe that Powell's raising rates, not just to fend off the supply chain inflation, but more so driven by the war based upon the past history. So it's, something to think about. Yeah, no, listen, it is. I mean, the, the Afghan war is not in there, but, you know, the Afghan war wasn't using as much munitions either. I mean, I'm quite familiar. Yeah, there's there's, 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 there's a deal there. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And, yeah. folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. We're going to go into newsletters to see the master and probability right on that right stand side. Check it out. There's a huge amount of great information. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.